Hulk Hogan lived age 71, which is like a gazillion in pro wrestling years. About half of professional wrestlers like Eddie Guerrero, Andre the Giant, and China die before the age of 40. The big question is, do we need to add taking a steel chair to the back as a major contributor to early death? Data from 557 male professional wrestlers who were active between the years of 1985 and 2011 were published in a peer-reviewed journal, so the results aren't script or staged. The overall mortality rate was nearly three times higher than the general male population for ages 35 to 54. The top causes were cardiovascular disease was responsible for 38% of the deaths, drug overdose nearly 18%, and cancer caused 8.8% of the deaths. No wonder 16% of pro wrestlers died before the age of 50. Digging deeper, they found that pro wrestlers are nearly 15 times more likely to die from heart disease and 122 times more likely to die from a drug overdose compared to other men of their age. Many pro wrestlers abuse steroids and painkillers, which are associated with an increased risk of mortality. Chronic injuries that often lead to self medication also played an important role. The final reason given by the authors was a high BMI and obesity. Some wrestlers have BMIs well over 40, which is well into the extremely high-risk health area. The good news is that they found that professional wrestlers who survive into their mid-50s have the same mortality rate as the general population. But as long as massive size, high injury rates, and a culture of unhealthy behavior exist outside the squared circle, the risk of early death will remain. But there is hope. Organizations like the WWE have been offering wellness programs to help take down these risks. If successful, have enough older wrestlers where steel chairs are replaced with walkers and canes. No, how about enough older wrestlers to open up an artificial knee and hip division? Which joke did you prefer? Let me know or add one of your own in the comments. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more serious science-based dives into the world of sports performance. As always, my answers come from peer-reviewed research.